Hi guys, my name is Catherine. I am one of the tutors here at Chegg. I tutor science, some math, English, and Spanish, and today we are going to be talking about a psychology topic, defense mechanisms. Uh, so defense mechanisms are an unconscious way for a person to cope with the stress, anxiety, or of life, or any unacceptable thoughts or feelings that they have. And we'll go into what that means by like unacceptable thoughts and feelings. Uh, Freud, who was a famous psychoanalyst, believed that the, the defense mechanisms were a part of how the id, the ego, and the superego were balanced. So as a quick aside, the id essentially is all of the things that you want, like food and sex. Um, the superego is your moral uh, compass who says, oh, like, it's not right to steal, it's not right to hurt other people. And the ego's job is to balance the two, and Freud thought that defense mechanisms were part of the way that the ego did that. In any case, defense mechanisms aren't inherently bad or good, and some of them are actually super useful. Like I said, they're a way to cope with stress and anxiety. And having good ways to cope with stress and anxiety is an incredibly important part of mental health. Typically, defense mechanisms are divided into three categories based on maturity level. It's not so much um, the age that people use them at, although you do learn the more immature ones first, but it's more related to how long they stand up in the face of stress. So the more... Uh, immature defense mechanisms won't last very long compared to the mature ones. Um, so the first immature or primitive defense mechanism is denial. The, an example of this would be somebody who is abusing drugs and says, oh no, I don't have a problem at all. Everything's under control. Um, another example might be someone who's just experienced a sudden death and says that it doesn't feel real yet that they haven't accepted it. Regression would be uh, a, um, like a uh, stepping back into a former level of development. So an uh, example of that would be a 12 or 14 year old kid who under the stress of a new school or being bullied or maybe a new sibling starts to wet the bed again. So they're stepping back into an earlier level of development and childhood when things were easier and simpler. And under extreme stress, adults can do this too, refusing to get out of bed, um, refusing to interact with the world. Uh, acting out is another primitive defense mechanism. It's something that you see a lot with toddlers or young kids who can't express that they're angry with words. So instead they hit things or they hit people or they throw things. Uh, Self-harm is also considered a form of acting out because it's a physical manifestation of pain that the person can't explain verbally or emotionally. Dissociation is a pretty extreme defense mechanism that you see in kids who have been abused or who have been through other really tough situations. Uh, where essentially they separate themselves from their bodies in a way, or they, like, they separate their psyches from their bodies during the abuse or during the traumatic event in order to separate themselves from it. And if this is extreme or it goes along, goes uh, for long enough, they can end up with what's called dissociative identity disorder, also known as multiple personality disorder, where they believe that they have more than one self. Compartmentalization is a less extreme form of dissociation that a lot of people do, where we separate two different parts of ourselves uh, in order to deal with the fact that they don't fit with one another. Uh, for example, a person who uh, pirates DVDs and music off of the internet, but also says that stealing is wrong and they don't like thieves, is compartmentalizing because they're stealing um, but they don't, they separate that self, that part of themselves from the other part of themselves. Projection is um, where a person experiencing some sort of negative thoughts or feelings or actions um, attributes them to somebody else instead. So an example of this would be a spouse who is cheating and instead believes that their spouse is the one 
who is being unfaithful believes that their spouse is having an affair, even though it's them who's having one. Um, to clarify, it's not that they don't believe that they are also having an affair. They just believe that the other person is too. And finally, reaction formation. This happens when you're in a situation where you, your stressful feelings or your anger or whatever um, are just unacceptable and you can't change the situation you're in. So you instead try to change your feelings about it to the extreme opposite. So for example, if you are working a job and your boss is awful to you, like she's always yelling, she's just like in front of the customer, she makes fun of you, it's just, it's awful to be around her, but you can't quit because you need the money. Uh, reaction formation would look like liking, saying that you really like your boss, complimenting her to her face, complimenting her at home, telling everybody that your boss is great, your job is great. You're trying to change your belief system so that it fits with the current situation because you can't fit the current situation to be better for your actual beliefs. So next up, we have mid-level defense mechanisms. Um, repression is somewhat similar to denial, but it's actually, despite being more mature, it's actually more extreme, where the person will refuse to acknowledge for a longer term that that part of themselves even exists. Um, a good example of this would be somebody who's gay um, but lives in a society or believes themselves that that is so unacceptable um, that they refuse to acknowledge it even about themselves, not even like in their own privacy will they talk about it. This is also kind of where repressed memories come in, but that's a little bit more complicated because memories aren't like a videotape. It's not like every time you play them, they're the same over and over and over again. Um, actually, any time that you uh, think of something that you've stored in your memory and then put it back in its spot while you're remembering it, it's super, super vulnerable to change. So repressed memories are a little more complicated than just receiving some stimulus that like brings it all back and then it's perfect. Um, but anyways, that's repression. Displacement is when um, you can't express your anger or your stress or your inappropriate thoughts and feelings towards the actual target of your anxiety. So you take it out on a um, easier or safer target. For example, same boss who's just awful um, and you can't talk to her about it, so instead your mom calls you later in the day and says, oh, like, did you send, I don't know, did you send me the package that you mentioned, or just something really small, and you just, like, go, oh my gosh, I can't believe you're mentioning that you're so annoying, you're always nagging me, um, and your mom didn't do anything, but you're angry with your boss, and you can't take it out on your boss, so instead you take it out on your mom, um, if later you feel bad about that, you might do what's called undoing, where even in the moment you go, oh gosh, like that wasn't wrong. Why did I do that? I don't know why I did that. You did it because you can't express anger on your boss and you're exhibiting displacement, but you don't know that. So instead, what you do is called undoing, where you start to, you compliment your mom. You say, oh, you know, you're so great. I'm sorry. You know, I saw that picture of you on Facebook. You looked great. And then even when you get off the phone, you keep doing it. Like that night at dinner, you're talking to your significant other and you're like, you know who's great? My mom's great. She's awesome. Um, and what you're trying to do is undo the bad thing that happened, that unacceptable behavior, by trying to balance it out with a lot of good compliments and good actions. Uh, intellectualization is when somebody receives bad news typically and then tries to rather than accepting the emotional part of it instead it tries to look at the cold hard facts of it to see it in a very academic way uh for example somebody receives a terminal illness and rather than um talking or thinking about you know death and what this might mean and how they're feeling about it they start to instead look up like exactly how this cancer works, exactly how they found out about it, exactly what treatments are there, like all of the science behind it. And by getting into these facts, they're able to distance themselves 
from the reality of what's going on. Um, and finally, we have rationalization. So this is all about um, somewhat like reaction formation. It's about changing your psyche to fit the events that happened, but rather than being for a continual event, like still being at a job, it's for something typically that's already happened. Uh, so for example, instead of being at a horrible job, you didn't get a job. And then after a couple days, maybe you're upset and you say to someone, you know, like, if I'd gotten that job, I would have had to go too far away for work anyways. Or I really would have, um, you know, it would have been stressful or it's not really my chosen field or you come up with reasons why it's good that this thing has happened to you. And finally, we have mature defense mechanisms. Um, oh, and I didn't mention before, the reason that these three slides have question marks next to their titles is just to remind you that it's not as cut and dried as like, this is what immature people do, this is what mature people do. It's more, like I said, related to um, the amount of time that they can typically stand up, although this isn't always true. Um, you know, for example, there are people who are able to repress things for years and years. Um, but although it's not a functional long-term solution, um, but it, basically it's about long, it's about length of time more than it's about, um, you know, maturity level. And finally, the three mature defense mechanisms. Sublimation is about taking unfair or, um, un unacceptable behaviors or thoughts or feelings and channeling them into acceptable manners instead. For example, you're really angry at your boss, so you go to the gym and you beat the crap out of a punching bag instead. Um, or, you know, you have a terminal illness and you have a sense of humor about it. That's considered a part of sublimation because you're taking those feelings and you're channeling them into a socially acceptable and positive way of dealing with them. Compensation is about recognizing um, the negative, but also the positive in a realistic sense. It's not about twisting the facts to fit the way that you want them to be. Um, but it would look something like saying, well, I didn't get the job, but, you know, this process has shown me that I am, you know, uh, personable or it's really made me realize that I am a good programmer or whatever it is it's recognizing the good with the bad um and finally we have assertiveness so this is a way of you learning when to speak up for yourself when to keep quiet and um it's used as a way of fixing the problems rather than dealing with them uh so for example in the case of that boss from before, assertiveness would look like calling her into her, like going into her office at some point when it's appropriate and saying, hey, I'd like to talk to you about this. I know you have a more uh, forward personality than I do, but I don't appreciate it when you insult me in front of the customers. I think it looks really unprofessional um, and it makes work really unpleasant. Doing that in a private way is assertive. You're not embarrassing your boss, but you are getting your feelings across. And it's effective, and it may make work better in the long term. Uh, so that is it for defense mechanisms. I hope you enjoyed learning together. And if you did, feel free to seek me out on Chegg.